you know, uh, a main message to the movie is how much, you know, do we need, how, what line are we willing to cross as human beings? And you really don't know that line. And the more and more social media grows, it seems that the line gets thinner and thinner. Well, I wanted to talk about just the fact, there's a throwaway line in this movie uh, about Ariel's name being related to a mermaid. And I have to say, the movie kind of is a mermaid allegory, if you know the mythology behind mermaid, because she pulls this guy in, she's kind of the culprit of it, fame gives her her kind of human legs to walk, and then at the end of the day, she has Lord Dean into his death. So do you kind of look at it? Sort of like, you know, you had the Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio, where it's kind of really hardcore and change. This kind of is a little bit of a Little Mermaid tale. Very interesting. I, I really like that, uh, that comparison. Very cool. Well, I mean, did you think that when you saw, saw the movie, or is that just something that kind of is happenstance to somebody that pull it out looking at the name and kind of that reference? Um, no, we wanted the reference because Ariel just, um, it seemed like, okay, Ariel, her as a character besides the name, is almost too specific, neurotic, anal, wants it her way. Even down to the way that, you know, of course, her name is said. And that's driven her crazy her whole life, that she's always compared to this fucking thing on a screen that is never kind of attainable to her and and maybe growing up uh watching that movie so many times or so many people referencing it she didn't realize as she goes through time that her story does really reflect the little mermaid um because you know it, it's kind of something that you you watch and you have no idea that what is that word that i'm looking for uh when you're doing something but you don't know that actually comes because you've watched something or so, so, you know, it's it, it definitely a subconscious thing, but there's an actual there's an actual like term uh, for it w when when that happens. But um, I think that we you know we just wanted Ariel to be such a an anal type of person when you meet her from the beginning that you meet her. She's like, hey, don't get this shit wrong. I'm gonna fucking tell you the way it is, and if you don't get it right or understand what I'm saying right now, I'm leaving this conversation. That's kind of what she's also saying to the audience is like, hey, by the way, guys, just know this is me as a person and I'm setting the tone for the rest of the movie for my character. This is me all in one little like paragraph. Okay, that pretty much <laughs> sums it up. Now, I think that this movie has some really great kind of unique choreography and cinematography in it and pointing to one scene early on Ariel comes out and she's talking to her friends and it's, she flicks a cigarette at the wall yeah. and it's such a great like shot moment that's a little bit perfect. But then at the very end, you almost miss it when she shoots the guy in the head and the blood spits and it's the exact same shot for shot scene where she flicks the cigarette but then shoots the guy just absentmindedly. And I'm wondering for both of you, kind of how you went through and worked on this photography and sort of uh, like, cine uh, like uh -huh. how it's uh, choreographed is really. And, yeah. Uh -huh. um, well, definitely, uh, you know, Eve and Josh are, are amazing. They are great collaborators. Uh, and Josh also had a lot of fun kind of holding the camera and letting us, you know, go. And Eve did the same. And that, you know, when you start working, uh, with somebody that's holding the camera, you start to learn their ways, their movements. And they're kind of fitting around you for what you're doing. So it's, if, if you have a connection with the person who's holding the camera, then you guys are on this rhythm. You're on this path and you're able to capture what you both wanna capture because you're in unison with one another. And I think that was one of the main keys of the movie is that me, Jake, Eve, and Josh were all so in unison um, with camera and elements to the story that it made it almost, you know, uh, it, it made it really work. You were able to really capture these pieces. And we did a lot of runners, so many scenes, 
Even the way that the movie is cut, I will say a lot of those scenes uh, as well that you may think that's not a one -er. It's actually a one -er, And until the last edit, it was not a one -er to just trim a few seconds out because of space time. Um, but there's so many one -ers in, in the fucking movie. And if you think about it, we're, you know, there, there is no cut. There, there really is not. So we are having to get it perfect with them. Me and Jake are having to be completely in unison as well as in unison with these two people that are holding the camera. And that is like... It, 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 it's making magic when you can get it right. And, and luckily we, we, we were able to capture those moments and get it right. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I liked a, a lot of the um, scenes of where you're just pointing the, the gun at the camera and stuff, some really unique uh, shots in this movie. But I wanna go to the gun. I thought that was a really genuine reaction when you shot the gun for the first time. And I was like, was that, in the script or was that your genuine reaction to shooting the gun because I've seen people shoot guns and have that reaction but sometimes in a movie when you're watching it and the cool girl is supposed to be mm -hmm. like cool and she shoots mm -hmm. the gun she'd just be like you know give like a cool look to the and we don't get that here we get like a genuine like surprise mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that uh, that was an interesting conversation with me and Josh, right? Because we didn't, you know, in this movie, we wanted to play against, you know, kind of a lot of character stereotypes. You know, I thought that that was a big theme that both Jake and I really did in the movie, where, you know, it was even, it was obvious, there's an obvious choice here. So we specifically went kind of in a different direction because, you know, we're trying to make these characters really dynamic and really real and, and intriguing and, uh, uh, and kind of like you might know that person uh, <laughs> if you were able to experience life, you know, you might meet this person along, uh, along the ride. Um, and I think that, you know, obviously the moment's in the script. Yeah, it, it, it's in the script. My character's like, no, we need to fucking go, Dean. Get in the car now. Um, and then the rest was kind of just, uh, yeah, just just letting it play. Uh, one of the things that I really liked as, as far as a choice was the difference between, you know, when, when he first pulls out the, the gun, you know, we're, we're just supposed to like go down and it's this, oh, fuck moment. But I really wanted to do this like, oh, Oh my god like you know so just like whoa so that when the gun moment happens and that realism sets in it, it's these very different dynamics right right next to each other um and, and 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 so that that's one of my favorite moments in that gun scene well and jake going back to you as um with the bonnie and clyde aspect and i know you said that's just the throwaway line that this so the, the media puts in there but your character really is different than um, what we've seen in these types of movies before, because I don't want to say he's passive, but he's not like um, Woody Harrelson in Natural Born Killers, where he's kind of the leader, but he, he's trying to go on the right path and he can't corral this energy. And it's interesting to me to kind of how you pull that in and try to lead, but can't because you have something that's too um, hard to pull back that makes sense. Yeah, well, I, I just think so much of this is, um, it's, it really is Ariel in the driver's seat. I mean, he, he's trying to maintain control and he's trying to get what he wants, but there's, it's just not happening. And I think, I think I just wanted to, I wanted Dean to like support this character. Like I wanted him to, you know, almost, not not be passive but like he's he's willing to do what she wants because like he's he's getting you know he's enamored by her he's 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 fascinated by her and he he thinks that he can convince her to be like different and he can i think that's like a classic um tale of a lot of people in relationships is they think things are going to change and they think that they can convince someone to do something and there's this this realization but um this story was always about being told from Ariel's like perspective and it's not, it's not Dean's perspective. It's not his, his story. So I just, what I want to do with Dean is just like, <clears throat> I, I, I want Dean to be like more reserved and pulled back and let the space be larger so that Ariel stands out more because like if Dean was too, too crazy, like, it just it just wouldn't work. They'd be too similar. But I wanted this like push and pull contrast between the two. Um, and Josh was great at like monitoring that, and, and we talk about it all the time. And 
I think everyone just kind of knew knew their place and and um like Bella said when she got into it she like she laid down the law like right at the beginning and so he's just like there's kind of a fascination with watching someone like that right you just you're like wow this is this is so interesting and I think that this character was you know he had that as much as it was like the downfall sometimes he was just like I'm I can't cannot watch I cannot follow along well, and that goes into uh, something I was wondering about watching the movie. Um, in terms of acting to a camera on a phone while you're also acting in front of a whole crew. Does that make sense? Like, so you're, you've got the phone up here and you're doing, you know, I'm talking to my social media outlets, Instagram, or whatever you're on. It has to be a different thing when you're doing this part, but you also have this whole other crew actually filming it over here. For, for you to film that way, because it's kind of a, you're doing two jobs at once, and then for Dean to kind of watch Bella transform into Ariel during those moments and see that and how you kind of pull that into your own performance, watching her act against the camera on the phone, more so than the camera that's, you know, in the hands of the director. Yeah, I mean, Bella was doing all the work. Like, I'm just kind of, I was just kind of watching and reacting and just like, um, she's the one that's like, she, that was like the heavy lifting but again I think that's um like an amazing asset she brings to the film and she'll she'll talk more about that but yeah well Jake really brought it together though when we when we do the scene where he's filming me uh uh and I am doing the weed robbery with the one long shot one long take you know that one I actually just posted the clip of the actual iPhone itself on my Instagram um because it's really it it's it it is the realism aspect to watching it just on an iphone is like one of the best parts because it really brings you to fuck i could totally see this in my newsfeed and that's the scariest part um uh yeah so you put that on your actual instagram feed after you shot it yeah, I just put it up. It's I literally put it up today. I put it up the the video of the actual iPhone. We act also one of our ideas for marketing was to use one of the other iPhone uh, footage as well as one of our trailers and just the iPhone footage so that you know people thought, whoa, what is happening right now? You know, is this is what am I watching? Wait, hold on. I'm so confused. Like, uh, you know, we wanted to kind of play with the idea of what if we made Ariel an Instagram and, you know, we kind of started this, this actual thing, you know? Uh, and, and so, yeah, but, what uh, but we did not. Well, I mean, right now it's more than, it's probably one of the most realistic things you can imagine everything that happens in this movie. I mean, it's not really, the fantasy element is kind of taken out of it at this point. You know what I mean? For everything that's gone on that you could totally see everything that happens in this movie actually happen mm -hmm. i would think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um I one of the cool parts as well speaking on that thing that you said to jake earlier you know jake touched on it really quick um that it's kind of from ariel's perspective and i think that's a huge theme in the movie i think one of the smartest things is like you know you realize after i tell jake and I'm like, Dean, like, you know, basically calm the fuck down. Like, I'm not going to get us caught. And then after that, there's, you know, this chunk of space that you must imagine there is time there. But in Ariel's head, it's one after another. Because the next important event in her life for her was when Jake is like, okay, baby. And he holds the camera and he takes it from her and is like, all right, I'll do the honors. And he does it. And, you know, technically we would have seen Dean if we were really playing it in actual real time. Um, we would have seen him so many times go, no, Ariel, no. And we go, yes. And him go, no. And we go, yes. In so many different scenarios where I try and pull out my phone. But for Ariel, because it really is in her span of time, um, the next important moment is, you know, like the, the first one was when Jake's like, no, we can't fucking do that. You're, you're crazy. And then the next one is when he's like, yes, okay, I'll do it. I agree. Um, and I think that that was an interesting note that I, I, I hope people also kind of catch when they watch the movie, um, is that, that, that space of time that is missing, that's, that's in Ariel's memory. That's just like pulled out, you know, because she doesn't care about all the times he told her no. She only cares about the one time he was like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Well, and, uh, this is something I talked oh. to 
Uh, yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh. We have to, to go to the next one. I'm so sorry. Um, if there's anything else that you think you need for the interview, then um, we can follow up on email. Oh, yeah. Good. I think you guys are great. So okay. we're all done. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Good chatting with you. Yeah, it was a great movie. I love it a lot. So good luck, and I'll see you guys later. Hell yeah. Thank you. Bye.